Good evening and welcome to the Brookfield Board of Selectmen's meeting for Tuesday, January 24th. Ask everyone to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. We will start by approving the warrant. So we'll contain a motion to approve the payroll warrant for 117 and expense warrant for 124. I will make that motion. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Announcements of not only veterans but seniors as well are encouraged to apply for the tax work off program. Please contact the Selectman's office by calling 508 867 2930 or extension 10 for more information and application. Any other announcements? No more openings for seniors. So that's why we just said veterans. Thank you, Karen. So I will retract and rephrase. Veterans are encouraged to apply for the tax work off. Same number stands. Yeah, right. Um, anybody wish to address the board this evening? Welcome, sir. Evening. Evening. Good evening. I didn't see on the petition on, on the um, agenda here tonight. Um, what was the outcome on that uh, investigation down at the uh, highway? Uh, there is a police report. Uh, if you, it basically states that there was no issue. If you'd like to receive a copy, it would have to be redacted, and that would be available at the police station. But what was the outcome of it? Just no finding. Okay. Mm -hmm. What was the uh, what was the uh, what was the basis behind it? That's something that I'm not going to get into in okay. this format. That's what I want to know. Okay, so it won't be on any agenda then. No. That's it. No. Okay. All right. Good. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else wish to address the board this evening? Hearing none. Item number one. Uh, last week we appointed our new water commissioner. I'd like to in uh, introduce and invite Mr. Bose. And if I'm pronouncing the name Bose, okay. Uh, welcome. Mm -hmm. so well as a uh, water superintendent, welcome, gentlemen. Um, unfortunately, you weren't able to come to our meeting last week when we appointed you because you work. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we do it. Uh, this is probably the biggest crowd we've had in a long time, so you get to see a few residents out here. Camera as well, picking you up. So the floor is yours, Mr. Barnes, if you'd like to introduce them and. This is Jim Bowes. He uh, he's our new water superintendent, and uh, he'll be uh, doing a couple weeks training, and then he's got up? the job. <laughs> and Michelle, um, I think everything's going to work out good for us. Good, that's good. Impressive resume. Yes, good. And thank you for joining the town of Brookfield. Appreciate it. Any, any questions, comments? Well, thank Not you for this time. Thank you for coming out. Yeah. And you know where we are every other Tuesday. Very good. All right. Any comments, questions? No. no, no. Yeah, right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Congratulations. Welcome on board. Thank you, sir. Item number two, dog kennel discussion. Um, first and foremost, I apologize to our, is a dog officer in the room? You want to come on up? Thank you, ma'am. I apologize to her through an email, so I'd like to apologize to you face to face. For the confusion that, um, and Karen will take it on the on the sleeve. Um, we had an individual questioning conversation. I guess was misconstrued. Mm -hmm. Dogs, animals are not being tied up and just left randomly. Nope. And uh, thank you for bringing that to our attention. Um, turning that discussion into what are we going to do moving forward? I'm personally against the campground mm -hmm. through the emails that I've seen. Mm -hmm. There have been discussions of other locations. I reached out to the Board of Health Chair this evening. I did not get a call back. Um, Eileen, our last, uh, I, she kept them at her own home. Yeah, the, she had a kennel. The individual before her actually kept them at the transfer station, and there was material down there that I think mm -hmm. rotted. No, we didn't. He used to keep them in Warren. I was told they kept them at the transfer no, station. No, kept them over in Warren. That transfer station was a long time ago. Oh, before him? Oh, yeah. Okay, but it, we do have a history of it? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. That's personally where I'd like to see it. I don't know where you guys are heading with the discussion. Me, me too. Well, if it's him. And they voted no last night. Yeah. On what grounds? He didn't say. Well, when was on liability, they were worried that 
people might come over and try to touch the dogs through the fence. And he's, they just, it, it was unanimous, it was unanimous vote, he told me. So we have a situation, do we want to look into possibly putting a kennel within the solar section? Where it's double fenced off? That's a possibility yeah, for sure. Yeah, a possibility. Um, Mr. Siri had mentioned to me today that there's a strip of land that the town owns beside, we, uh, right beside the highway garage on the other side of where we keep the sand and the salt. He said we own a strip of land in there, so he says maybe that would be a possibility. The highway garage. It would be behind it. No, he said right off to the side, you know, where the, um, they keep the sand and the salt. salt yeah. Right there. He said so right there's off a strip this, between yeah, the guys' property. He said there's a lot. strip in between Mr. Beer's property and the town. And he mentioned that too. That'd be kind of inconvenient to get to, wouldn't it? That wouldn't. We're talking there's to like the a, right. There's a, yeah, to there's the right. Face, face yeah. Of the, yeah, that, that's private property. So no, but he says that there is a strip that the town owns in there. It's probably just a right away. No, that's probably what it is. Well, we need to research it. <clears throat> for sure, because that, that would be a possibility. Because now with all the new requirements that you need, we're going to have to invest quite a bit of money. Possibility could be behind the highway barn. Oh, I don't know. There's, then there's you, a lot of room back there. Yeah, but then you've got neighbors there that might complain about it, too. Your thoughts, ma'am? Um, well, when I'm not going to lie. When we did go up to the campground, um, that's the only building that I have personally seen, and it actually looked ideal. Uh, it's already got cement that can easily be sealed. It's got a solid structure that's not leaking. Um, the transfer station, obviously, they said no to. Regardless what you go to do, it's going to be very expensive because the state has certain requirements. Um, I did contact Mr. Um, Cahill and asked him to get in touch with um, Mike, Mr. Siri, and get the... Um, a detailed description of all the things that need to be put into it um, to him so that we can get it to you guys. So that we're just, I guess, waiting. They're playing phone tag at, uh, at the moment. Mm -hmm. But it is going to be expensive. Uh, Mike had mentioned uh, possibly regionalizing with some other towns to try and... We've gone down the route of North Brookfield and just never he, get an answer, do we? He mentioned yeah. to me today about regionalizing with the four Brookfields. Because West Brookfield is in the same boat. West Brookfield does not have a kennel currently. They are relying on VCA Wickabog, and that is that's who I'm also relying on. And it's not a guarantee that they will have space because they do board for um, um, private people. Mm -hmm. Is that at a cost to the town? Or? Um, Yes and no. If the animal ends up lasting there over the seven-day hold period, then there is a cost to the town. Um, if they, 90% of the time, Brookfield, I have, haven't had a stray dog so far, uh, knock on wood, but um, they go to pick up their dog and they have to pay the vet directly. So they end up still having to pay and it's inconvenient. <laughs> well, it is what it is. It, yeah. the, they found their love pet in good health and being yep. taken care of. Mm -hmm. So if, if we have that service, are we just spinning our wheels? Why not just maintain that service? Because it's not guaranteed. Because at the moment, it's a 50-50 shot as to whether or not they will have space. Mm -hmm. Because of that, if they don't have space, I cannot pick up the animal. If it's sick, if it's injured, I can. I can go out and I have to bring it to a vet. I mean, by law, let's say I was a jerk and I decided I didn't want to, I couldn't do that. So if it's injured, I have to bring it to the vet. The vet has to hold it. And regardless if they have space or not, the animal has to stay there. Have we reached out to the Second Chance Animal Shelter in East Brookfield? I did try twice. I have not heard back from them. My assumption is that um, because they have their own, well, flow of quarantine animals and everything that they are not going to have the space. Do you mind if we reach out to them? Sure, by all means. I know a couple people down there. I didn't know any of this was an option. I had received um, a letter from some residents on Pine Lane. They're definitely against it, having it down there. Is that the campground? Yeah. yeah. Okay. The Pine Lane is right on the front. You know. They're in Village District and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the very constructive community down there with dogs. So they're all against it down that area. Well, plus we're 
get the snow off the ground, we'll actually be working down there. So yeah, you're going to be working down there too. So that would be hard to. Yeah. To, 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 it was an idea. Yeah. All right. So, so, so if we don't have any, which is good, and the, the knock on wood again. Um, and there's a 50-50 chance if I re reached out to second, ch second Chance Animal Shelter and explained that it would be an overflow, the possibility of the 50-50, and if they're okay with that, do we want to stay with that path? Or And then I would say, are there other vets that would have space or could potentially have space as a backup to that? Uh, not any that are in the area. Because VCA Wickabog is the only one that currently boards dogs, mm -hmm. um, the others, they do 24-hour um, holding because of surgical needs. Okay. but they don't do um they don't have in the indoor outdoor kennels or so going down that path a little bit further <clears throat> then so wickabog had do they have space to expand i don't know it's, I, it, it's an interior yeah. the, it's downstairs right yeah i believe so yes, it's, 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 it's a interior. driveway and you go around yeah, it's there. an interior facility yeah. they're not going to expand that well it, it, follow the, yeah. the logic just for a second yeah. So the idea of them expanding possibly that, that structure doesn't make sense. But at the same time, if Westbrook Field is in the same boat we are, mm -hmm. and they, they wouldn't have space currently for, for all the, the regional needs, would they consider, and again, it's a question of would a businessman consider expanding, or a business person expand based on some knowledge that there would be potential growth? Of opportunity. And you think all of the Brookfields are in this situation? Um, have you reached out to North or? North Brookfield does have a kennel. I don't believe the state has seen it, otherwise, they would probably not have a kennel. <laughs> they would probably not have a kennel. Um, East Brookfield, I believe, has a kennel. I'm not certain. I have tried to get in touch with her no, several times. We have somebody in the audience that works for East Brookfield. She just shook her head no. No? no? Okay, so then they don't have one either. So, so then, that, so that if Wickabog is like the only game in town, would they look to expand? Valid question. It's whether you're asking the question or mm -hmm. one of us is asking. To me, it would question. be a second chance animal yeah. shelter. I oh. think they're they're in a better position yeah. to, expand. to expand. Well, then, then second chance probably would be more likely to expand than VCA Wickabog mm -hmm. because one's a business, one's a rescue. So, and the only thing that we can look, uh, we could hope for, we can ask them both and see what happens. Uh, VCA Wickabog would probably try and, you know, weigh pros and cons of a financial gain versus loss. Uh, second chance um, may actually be able to help and get grants together if the towns were to regionalize working with them yeah, um, are and you, get are you further opposed, that way. Are you opposed to us reaching out to the other three towns to have a regionalization? No. Nope. Not, I'm not opposed at all. Mm -hmm. right, do you want me to run with this one and go for it? It's probably going to take yeah. a few weeks to get everything together. Yeah, right. And so that in a few weeks, in the few weeks that we're trying to do something, are, are we under control? Is probably the question. Um, at the moment, we are um, as under control as we can be. Um, if a citizen finds a dog and has the capability, like if the dog is friendly and it's not dangerous. Um, I have been bringing them food that people have donated uh, just to hold, house the dog for mm -hmm. until we can find its owner. Otherwise, I'm afraid I can't pick it up unless it's injured or um, appears sickly. So it's not an ideal situation. It's not one that I like, but I mean, it's we can deal with it. It, it's working at the moment. Mm -hmm. Have we reached out to Eileen to see if she's willing? Mike did. Mike did, and he said no, she won't because of the liability. By the way, Mike also called, I believe, West Brookfield today. I don't know if he called East Brookfield, but he said he was going to call both of those to ask. But Eileen's not even around, is she? I, don't I think know, her I think son she lives up there. The I think her, her son her. lives up there. Okay. All right. That's how we shall proceed. Yeah. Any other questions? Thanks for coming in. Thank you. And thank, you for, thank you for nice what you do. Nice meeting the three of you. Yeah. Same here. Thank you. Now no faces. <laughs> item number three is a CMRPC block grant. Uh, three items in this packet. Uh, first and foremost, uh, the executive director is requesting that we sign on to that uh, block grant at a, no cost to the town. Uh, they do implement the project. 
uh, but it is requesting a signature from the chair, so I'll entertain a motion. I actually like to have four pieces to the motion, if we could, Mr. Chairman. I will entertain it. So the first would be to sign the CMRPC uh, memorandum of understanding, where they in fact lead the the uh, activity. The second is you will find a blight letter in there that's related to the. So you just all want it all one motion. Yeah, I, just I was going to do them separately. Okay. Yeah, right. So there's a second uh, a blight letter that uh, describes a property in blight, and with that. We are able to take an action uh, or move forward should we be uh, granted the grant. Um, and in the motion, if we could just mention 15 Post Road. 15 Post Road, sure. And the, the next piece to that, as it relates to 15 Post Road, we may need to spend as much as $450 for a consultant to support Andrew in his efforts so that the motion include uh, a sum of $450 from the consultant budget. Not, not to exceed. Not to exceed $450. And then the, the last item within that motion would be that Ken Cleveland be identified as the envir environmental officer. And that's it. So Mr. Snyder is making that motion. Do we have a second? I will second that. Any discussion? Hearing mm -hmm. none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Still want to write 16. requires all three of us. appointment to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, Mr. Simon has uh, decided to jump back in. I was unsuccessful in trying to talk him into uh, his prior position, but uh, he's definitely willing to join our team on the Zoning Board of Appeals, so I'm going to entertain said motion. I'll make that motion. No second. Any discussion? Besides, thank you. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item number five, the wage authorizations that we passed over because they were not signed by the personnel board. I will entertain a motion to approve Ms. Parrish for the tax collector at a rate of 41,000. Oh, which one was it? This this was signed. Well, see, that was last year. Okay, so this is the new one. At $41,870.53. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll make that motion. Mm -hmm. You don't want a second, Linda? I'll, 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 I'll second. I'll second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Entertain a motion to offer uh, wage authorization for Ms. Toto as an election worker at a rate of 1136. Do we have a motion? That's Mr. Toto. Oh, I'm oh Eugene. Motion. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Linda's got me going tonight. It's been a long day. It has been. Yeah, I apologize, Mr. Toto. We have a motion? I can make motion, sure. I'll second. second. Yep. Any discussion? Hearing that all in favor? Aye. Aye. Entertain a motion to approve wage authorization for Miss Lazelli. As an I'll election make motion. I'll second. Same rate of 11.36. Any discussion? Hearing that all in favor? Aye. Aye. Item number six, Mr. Snyder requested to place a planner HR specialist position. The floor is yours, sir. Well, we've had conversations or discussions on grants, and we find ourselves at a point where the MOU and, and that we just signed with the CMRPC provides leadership for that particular grant, but that there are other, uh, are other grants. For example, this week I did not attend a park um, grant opportunity where you could learn about uh, park, f finding park money for, from uh, the Commonwealth. Uh, where that might apply would be down at, at the campground as we move forward, that there would be grant monies to make it a park if that's what the town so choose. 
so that there are these different opportunities, and I use the word planner because that's who typically within the regional planning offices write the grants. And so there's opportunity there. Cindy's tapped out. There was complaints yeah, I, last. I, I talked to her. Yeah, complaints about her hours or whatever over the last couple of weeks. She stepped out as far as the amount of bandwidth she has to apply for grants. So she's got to focus on the highway stuff because she's been successful and we've done so well that we need to be continuing that. So where I was headed with this thing is that, and again, there was a meeting some time ago where it, the talk of an administrator or whatever there is a need for a part-time person to write grants. We also, over the last couple of weeks, have had conversations around human resource issues. We'll have conversations around uh, procedures on how to buy things. And all these things require people to focus, not, I don't think that we have the bandwidth to be focused on these different activities. So I would like to approach the town at town meeting for a part-time role, and at least the two attributes of that role would be uh, a planning activity that's focused on grants, grant writing, as it relates to more of the town activities rather than highway, as well as human you know, resource issues that we face, and that they be handled on a more daily basis rather than a bi-weekly basis. So that's well, we do have nice money story. though, like for a planner, we have Bill Scanlon who's on board with us, and he's expensive. But we have money. We oh, do we have yeah, money in the yeah, kind of and, bill, and he's very good. He's got us a lot of grants. And both of these positions, if you did uh, put them before town meeting, you know, they'd have to be written up, job descriptions, the yep, whole thing, yep. and they'd have to go before the personnel board. We'd Absolutely. We have to have a, a figure, you know, a salary, and let, they, be, uh, they would be creating a. Uh, new positions for the town. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I talked to um, the treasurer today, and she said that she, she doesn't have any problem with, like, an HR person because she said she really could use the help. So there, there's, we, we have to go through through the process. Yeah, we got a lot of process. This was, this was, a, this was a, an, idea, an yeah. agenda item as an idea. Mm -hmm. it, it's no, no more than an idea. And as an idea and discussion, I, I'm personally against it. I'm, I'm a small government guy. Yep. I, I think we keep growing this town. We have people complaining, you know, coming into the selectman's office. I was literally assaulted by an individual because of his property taxes. Um, well, just, we'll talk about that too. It, it just gets bigger and more expensive. Yep. We do have the money for grant writers. Um, I spoke with an individual uh, that works for the town. He, he claims that when we did get a grant writer involved, uh, we lost the grant, and then Cindy took care of it, and she got the grant. Oh, I know. I, yeah, it, I know. It, I heard it, that, too. It, and yeah. quite honestly, the, the Cindy to mentor a person that would be able to write grants other than the highway would be a big deal. I talked to Cindy about even you know, writing grants and we could take the money out of that account and pay her, but she said, you know, there's been some complaints the last couple of weeks with the hours that she's putting in and hours attending meetings. And so she says she's going to sign off for right now. She yeah, says well, she's got she's enough on her up. plate. Yeah. So. so maybe the discussion might be giving Cindy more hours? Yeah, that's a possibility. In, in the budget? Yeah. That's a possibility. Mm -hmm. HR, I, I truly believe, should be handled by the, the board and the personnel. I think we do a good job. It, it's we, we, a need to, we, need, we need to do better. No, but with the, the HR, I mean, that's a lot to take on. I mean, that they would administer, they, they'd help out, you know, with your insurances, and that they would do the quarry checks and any kind we of all deductions. Do house now. You're, yeah. you're not but, you know, if we had an extra person to help out, even somebody to come in a couple of days a week. And increase the taxes, so. All right, so we'll bring it before the, the uh, advisory committee first, and yep. then obviously the town has the yep. final say. Absolutely. Well, it was budget night tonight, so it's yep. a good topic to bring before them. All right. Item number seven. Uh, this has been floating around there back there for a while. Um, you're laughing because you know it's right. The uh, Massachusetts Education and Government Association is requesting 100% response to their ballot. Um, I will entertain a motion to <coughs> allow the chair to sign the, um, the ballot in support for suggested recommended candidates. I will make that motion. Second. Any discussion? Any not all in favor? Aye. Aye. Number eight, more fishing derbies. And there's a lot of them because it's 
Okay. I bought all in one block. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to entertain a motion, all in one motion, for 520 Quaybog Pond, Greater Lowell Bass Fishers, 86 Quaybog Pond, American Bass Anglers. Well, there's Clarence. Yeah. Well, don't sign no, anything until don't sign anything sign. until we vote. Oh, eight thirteen, Quaybog Pond, Classic Bass Anglers. Eight twenty five, Quaybog Pond, Big Bass Busters. Eight twenty seven, Quaybog Pond, ABA nine uh, D ninety seven. Nine seventeen, Quaybog Pond, Cabin Fever Bass Club. Nine twenty three, Quaybog Pond Shootout Series. Six four. Quaybog Pond, Mass Bass Alliance, 527 Quaybog Pond, Mass Bass Alliance Solo. Do we have a motion? I will make that motion. And I'll second it. Any discussion? Nope. Only no question is will we have any fish left? Yeah. <laughs> we do. We, I actually brought that up years ago. Uh, some do practice catch and release, mm -hmm. but it, it, is, it well, is good. This weekend, it's supposed to be having a Lions Club down there, and the ice is pretty well broke up. So they'll, they'll probably cancel. Yeah, they'll have to cancel. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Item number nine, reviewing of the selectmen's budgets. We both have a copy of the package from Karen. Uh, the fiscal year 18 draft budget reflects level funding with the following exceptions. Pilot is going from 750 to 800, which is in line number 70, on allowance for increases. 730 diesel fuel from 17 to 20,000. Back to fiscal year 17 on Herb's recommendation. Oh, 16, I'm sorry. 740 gasoline from 21 to 26,820. That just seems like a weird number. I'd probably recommend bringing it to 27. That's just a knee jerk. I'd probably recommend bringing it to 27. Nice even number. And general. Item number 740. Oh, there's a third 740. page. It's on the third page. Okay, got it. And general insurance from 137 to 141, which in, uh, reflects a 3% increase that Mr. Joseph recommends. Payroll increases. Any discussion on any of those? Mm -hmm. So basically, level funding everything with the exception of those four items. And instead of the 26, 820, bring it to 27. <coughs> We good with that? How about I see here? We're going to decide later on the selectman's fleet you can replace account. That'll be an ongoing discussion, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. I've always wanted to get it to a hundred thousand. I've been on on record with that. So. Okay. And where are we? I don't know the number now. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, sleep, uh, selectman fleet repair, replace? There's 45000 currently, uh, a little bit more than 45000 Minus the thirty six. No, that's already it's a, That's what I meant. Okay. So there's forty five. yeah. All right, we good with that? Yeah. yeah. Entertain a motion to approve said budget and submit to the advisory committee. I'll make that motion. And I'll second it. And just, uh, if we've got just a moment on that topic. I put something together because we're not going to be going to the... Uh, Mass Municipal Association that Soiree. Was this past weekend. Yep. Bless, yeah. Soiree. I put a document together, and uh, all due respect, Mr. Chairman, on your earlier remarks with respect to the tax rate. But what I did is um, I had a question on the advisory committee's. Uh, well, understand, don't shoot the messenger, which I think no. you just drew back and did. But no, I didn't mean right. that. <laughs> on purpose, anyway. Right. Anyway. Um, so I had a couple of questions before we got into it. The first is I, I put the advisory board committee's um, responsibilities by bylaw on the top of this page. Are there other, and again, this gets back to procedures that I may not be familiar with, are there other procedures in town that relate to the definition of the responsibilities of the advisory committee? I.e., you only want them to deal with budgetary items? No. Okay. It's, do we have a do we have another document no, other it's just, than this one? It's just the, just the, in the bylaw. The, just the, in the town bylaw. Town, bylaw. town bylaw. All right. So I just which I've tried to change twice to give it a little bit more teeth. But understood. And it, but but that's that's what we're dealing with. There's no other. No, that's it right there. Agreement. No, it's been okay. the same. They changed it a little. Where you see it was amended in 2006. Right, 2006. And that's it. 
So, so the next piece, and, and because I was also, I would say I was accosted, but I've had conversations with respect to tax bills lately, um, as well understood. So I did it a little differently, because the other, the other piece is that I'm very fortunate to have the property that I have, and th that it's growing. And in fact, the, based on DOR uh, information, our, our property values, the average one, or the property values grew 1.9%. With that, the average guy that's $200,000 house now has $3,700 worth of equity. Should everything stay the same, that person has $3,700 of equity that he didn't have a year ago. For that, and again, that's 1.9% up, so to the positive. On the flip side, we in fact raised the, prop, uh, the uh, tax rate 12 cents to 1962. With that, I think that the advisory board leadership of the town, employees of the town, should get a pat on the back because that's only six-tenths of a percent. So when I look at it, or I, as I looked at it, I received in one, one hand, and I can't get a hold of everything, but in one hand, I'm gonna receive, if I am an average property tax oh, 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 property holder of a $200,000 house, that, that I actually grew $3,781. And that cost me $85 is the way that math works out. So though I respect and I understand that uh, tax, taxes did go up, yeah. that's the math that stands behind. So should someone have multiples of $200,000, they would have multiples of $3,700 that went into at least their back pocket if, if, they had to, uh, if they wanted to go after their equity. So I, I see the brush you're painting with, and if you have done nothing but respect me and my, or understood and respected my outlook on how I govern, um, it took, took a couple months to realize that there's always two sides to a sword, and yep. that's what this job taught me. Yep. So the other side of this sword is, as a taxpayer for that $200,000 house, I'm seeing my equity go up, which means I'm going to be taxed higher on it. Oh yeah, so, it also so, happens. So the tax rate should go down on the same end but we're if, for, if yeah. I'm paying more. Yeah. So yeah. There's, there's two sides to that yeah. sword. Oh, and, and yeah. People need to realize that there are two sides to yeah. many stories. So the other part was that this clear government, and I don't know if you saw the emails from clear government, but they're a watchdog and uh, also look to provide some consulting services. What I, what I did is I pulled down what they were telling us, and, and again, I've got extra copies if people want it. So the revenues for the town were $7.7 .7 million in the 2015 records, which was a percent higher. In the case of the expenses, those were 2% higher uh, for 2015. But if you flip the page, I think that what I'd like to present to the chairman of the advisory committee is a copy of, of this document because it really focuses in on, and, and Linda, because you took on the responsibility at the last meeting yeah. on the elementary mm -hmm. or the school committee activities, I think the, the, the next piece is telling. That the suggestion is that at the elementary school we're spending $12,251 per student, or we did that in 2015, in fiscal year 2015. That's 10% below what other town, and again, Brookfield, because of where we rank, we rank in a lower third of the communities in the Commonwealth. So ranking with similar towns, we're actually 10% below what other towns, similar service, would be providing their elementary school. I think that that's a big number, and I'm not quite sure I, I'm very comfortable with that number. The second piece, it appears that Tank Tantasqua at $12,805 is about right. Overall, on a 4.3 or 4.4 million dollar school budget, we're 4% higher. We're $175,000 higher than that similar town. So as you deliberate with the mm -hmm. school committee, the, the key question for me is we've got a, uh, we've got a mismatch um, as far as the uh, elementary versus tent task mm -hmm. and what we're spending to the tune of 175,000 bucks. Area was a, a little concerning, uh, public safety. Public safety, but in, in that, I'm wondering if that was fit out for the police station and the and the like. So, uh, I w really would like. A, a, what are these 2015 numbers? Yeah, 2015. So it shouldn't, should, should but it, maybe it does. I don't. Again, but I would turn to the advisory committee as well as they do their deliberations, and suggest that we're spending $103,000 more 
in the area of public service than other similar towns. If I then look at benefits, we're up 12% for similar. So again, an $80,000 difference. We're not up, we're just higher. We're, we're higher than, higher. and what, what <coughs> the question is, is what, what causes us to pay more? I mean, there could be a very logical answer. But again, when we're starting to look at having property uh, tax rates go down, you've got to look at these things to say, where are, where are the dollars so being spent? So those employee benefits, do they take into account the teachers? I believe so, yes. And so that, that, that's, a, 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 and again, oh, I'm sorry, no, no, the teacher uh, benefits are in education. Right. The education is all in. Um, general government, as I looked at what we just did as far as saying what we, we want to be spending in FY18, um, we're pretty, by being where we are, we're, we're about where everybody else is. In the area of public works, we're spending 20% less to the tune of $105,000 less than similar towns. I would suggest that we maybe need to get, give uh, Herb a, uh, an award for that. Um, cultural and human resources, um, human, human services and cultural and rec, because of how they're labeled and whatnot, it's almost like one is higher and one is lower. It's almost like that they're awash. So again, I just provide this information because I think it gives us food for uh, our deliberations over the next couple of months. And I will make sure that Mr. Holcraft has a copy before he leaves. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. All right, on to other. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I'm keeping it. Here. Oh, yes. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all Several set. extra copies. Of I'll take Thank you, sir. All right. Um, this morning, the highway department, I did see the email. There were a couple of attachments uh, based on our discussion two weeks ago and a couple of citizens' um, attention of the signs. <coughs> there is a request by MassDOT to remove the um, road close signs. It's, I should have become an attorney because I could argue this. Do you know what, uh, on top of this, you know what happened? Is, is that they've gone at DOT. All right, so they're, they're sending us a letter to take down the signs. Mm -hmm. Do you know we've been waiting since November 4th? And you, again, you took this thing on the first time, so maybe it's my turn. The, 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 but, day, but the day I hit it, I was just. November 4th, right. we asked for permission to go do the fix. The design is done. We are now still waiting into now January, almost February, and for them to approve it. We, we can take that up as well on the correspondence as well, oh, is okay. that the, the engineers are question oh, that Mass DOT is questioning the engineers, and the engineers yeah. is kind of passing it back to DOT. So. And they're the ones that recommended the guys. Yeah. I mean, I, I got a little problem with that one. Okay. Anyway. I, I, I think they call it, you're preaching to the choir. I, I understand. I to up too, be after it's on the bridge too. It, well, it's well. What do we want to do about it? I, I read the street closed signs because it's basically two lanes, two way traffic. It, you know, you could argue that it's not theoretically two way. You have to stop. It's not controlled with a light. We have a stop sign. People are not obeying it. Um, I, I'd almost rather have Herb, the chief of police, and Mohammed get into a room and. Absolutely. See, Go at it. To me, this is a public safety issue. Yeah, it is. Well, I'd not, like not to a letter sent out so because they had a complaint from the TNJ. Yep. Well, I would like to add, because of the article that was in the paper yesterday by the TNJ reporter, the commuter traffic is back again. I had to sit in my driveway to wait to get out there tonight. We had trailer trucks going over the bridge. And now what's going to happen with all that, they're going to weaken the good side of the bridge. Well, that's not going to happen. To me, it's a GVW issue. But um, um, it's, it's just increased the traffic the last two days out there. So seeing that your hair has been raised in, the, in your hindquarters. My, ta my do, turn. Do you want to speak to the chief of police? Oh, yeah, certainly. And, and her, yep. and see if they can facilitate a conversation with Mohammed. And, and what the timing of this hearing is, because it's all mute, is if you go off and fix the bridge. And, and an issue needs to be brought up on the GBW because if trailers are going over it, I'm gonna I'm gonna be safe to assume that the GBW is being possibly being, being violated. Well, that's all the stuff from 49. That's where 40 the, because they can't go west on nine. They're going through the back yeah, road. They're going through the back road. They've done that for years, and now they think they saw the article in the paper, so now they think they can go over the bridge again. 
even though it's been marked. Yeah, I'll talk to her. Okay. Uh, we did receive correspondence. CPTC is offering a meeting Saturday, March 18th, 2017. Uh, if you wish to attend. Oh, that was on to other. I think Mr. Snyder wanted to, do you want to talk about that? Which one? You asked me to put CPTC, that the, the, the spring conference in March 18th. Boy. Citizens Planner Training Collaboration Spring Conference. Maybe, Maybe I suggested. Email that says right there. It's me. I, you could tell. Would, would you I, add this to other correspondence? We would. We should encourage participation. So we're there encouraging we participation That's, through the CPTC, uh, March 18th. Bullets, special permits, variances, introduce introduction of zone to the zoning act. Vested rights and non-conforming structures. This sounds like a who planning for medical and recreational marijuana. I thought you'd like it. This sounds like a. Uh, it sounds like a MMA, the MMA, MMA conference last week. Mm. Uh, new Chapter 40B handbook for ZBAs. That might be interesting. Oh, well, well, thank you, Clarence. Yeah, I was trying to look um, out for It's going to be at Holy Cross. I've attended one of these for selectmen at that facility yeah. uh, in Worcester, and again March 18th, 2017. Um, correspondence, we received a, I want to call it a, a petition, I, I Linda, it. well, you're a we. <laughs> um, yeah, but it was a joke that came to me. From several house. residents of 57 Town Farm Road, um, basically demanding that we uh, reinstate uh, Mr. Martell immediately. <coughs> Unfortunately, we can't do that. We really can't even have a discussion about that right now, other than the fact mm -hmm. that the vehicle is still at the location for detailing. Um, it's going to become a, a budgetary issue. Okay. They, they, if it, the problem is, and I'm, I'm trying to choose my words carefully, um, they were not given proper permission to work on the vehicle through the town of Brookfield, uh, through town council. We're not legally <laughs> responsible for that, but it would be a, a fight in court. Um, I've asked Karen to reach out to both entities. Uh, we discussed this two weeks ago of where I we were going with to, it. And I you talked spoke to with the them. dealership. He had called when I was in the office last week. Um, today we left a message. We're going to try to call him when we get back into the office. Uh, we're working with off his cell phone number to physically take possession of the vehicle, physically go to the location mm -hmm. with a runner and pick up the vehicle. So we do not incur, as of today, we're not incurring any storage charges. Okay. Um, so we, we can alleviate that. They can keep it on their site and possibly well, uh, sell it for Well, us. he told me that um, when I had discussed it with him, he said uh, it was designed, he says it doesn't have a console in it. So he really can't sell it too much of like a mom and pop vehicle. He well, it's... The it's, steering, it, he says that the um, your shifter is on, the, is on the, uh, steering wheel right there. He said it's all done up in like vinyl. He says it's, it's not even... A, but that's how, that's how it was, the vehicle was. He said that's how it was ordered. It was ordered like that. And he says most of the vehicles now, he said, um, people, public safety are riding on black. And he said it's kind of hard to get rid of a white one. But it's a situation, it is what it is. And well, I know. He's, I he's to willing to work with he, us. He's willing to work with us and see what he can do. And he says he knows of another community that's looking for a vehicle, but he doesn't know if they want to take a white one on. So it'll, it'll pan out, and they're on the state bid, so I'm, mm -hmm. I'm hopeful. Okay. Um, with this, there is a request that I saw through an email um, that Ms. Lincoln and uh, our accountant are asking for a meeting with uh, Mr. Martell in regards to several things that they found. Okay. Um, I don't see that as a violation to his rights. Uh, me, personally, I try to put myself in his shoes. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have the questions in an office where I can yeah. respond to them as opposed to in front of the public, in front of a camera. So but, it's not caught off guard. But like um, I, I discussed it with town council, and she said it's his choice what he wants to do. If, if he, he wants, wants to meet with you privately. Priva privately, or if he wants to meet at an open session. So bringing well, it, it's not a meeting with the board. It's just a meeting with you and Karen. Oh, well, you get some out. questions. You need them addressed. Yeah, we need them addressed, and we're getting Karen. Now, they, how far? They could be non-issues. How far have we gotten so far? What year? Uh, we have finished all of uh, seventeen so far. And half of 16. Half of 16. Now, do we want to go back into fiscal 15? Well, I would go through the, the issues that you have to see if yeah. if it warrants going further. From what I've heard, uh, issues it, it might warrant going back further. Okay. So then let's have have yeah. the dialogue. Yeah. Because I've been coming up a couple of days a week and spending a good part of the day up here going through them, and Carrie's been very helpful, both of us. Yeah. 
So get your answer. Get so the that there's no answered. there's no opposition to having that type of discussion. I think we need to have. Yeah. Oh, obviously, it, it, it's it's going to be had, but in what what yeah. venue? Yeah. Okay. Any other other issues? I just want to clarify. So go. You want another year done? Another year done. Okay. Any other topics, issues, concerns, questions? Uh, yes. Speaking of another issue. Private roads oh, yeah. and the plowing of private roads. Welcome to Brookfield. Yeah. Welcome to Brookfield. So it's kind of gone back and forth, if my research is correct, yeah. that we have and we haven't and we have and now we're in the middle. I know. Karen has some, some things from 1996. 1996. I was amazed. Which none of us were here for. So. I, oh, I, I was, was long ago. I was, <laughs> not this seat. I was <laughs> still in Westminster being a happy camper up there. <laughs> School, school committees in those days were, were actually fun. Anyway, I enjoyed it even back anyway, 10 years um, ago. So my thought, speaking of town meeting, is do we bring it back to town meeting to say we are or we're not? So the math that I understand is... Well, correct me if I'm wrong, it's, it's a policy set by the Board of Selectmen, not by the town. And I, yeah. I totally respect yeah. that. Okay. But I, but I, I but would if we brought it to a town meeting. You brought it to a town meeting. If say, it was brought to a town meeting, it would have to become a bylaw, yeah. which okay. I don't think we need. I think we can just stay with a policy. Yeah. A ratification. Let's, let's, the thought would be a we ratification can, of the, of we the can policy. Do, we can do that within this board. But I want the whole crowd there to say they agree or they disagree. That would be a bylaw. Uh, do you have to go that far? You would have to invite yeah. people to a selectman's meeting to have them voice. No, and we're going to have the crowd that we have tonight. No, you won't. You sure? Okay. <laughs> All right. Maybe. No, can, like Mr. I, Chairman, like can I, we put that on the agenda? Like then? I stated at the beginning, we can. But Let's like do it. You'd probably have a lot of people live on private roads show up, especially so, the one that's complaining. So the math. Well, we, we, so, so this is where I'm at. In my, my experience on this board for six years, there's probably been less than a handful of people that have approached this board in regards to issues with it. That two-sided sword again, I'm extremely sympathetic to people that live on private roads. And Cindy's email, and she, I'm glad she said I'm getting off my soapbox. To, yeah. I don't know if you guys yeah. read it. But she I, feels Because I was, I was looking at it, I'm like, yeah, you're on a soapbox. So the other, I laughed yeah. when, when she yeah. understood it. But, and I respect it. Um, they pay taxes, the same taxes yeah. that we pay in this town for the same exact services, but don't get it because of the private road plowing. But that other side is that that road has not been turned over to the town and it becomes a liability on the town if we physically plow. It. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Th there's two sides there. And even in the Forest Street issue, and I'm not bringing up any names, she, she admits and she understands that it was a private road, but she says the realtor said that, you know, there's a he said, she said everything. Mm -hmm. Sure. But we could have a hundred different policies. If people don't agree with it, they're not going to be happy. So as we had our conversation over tax rates and expenses and the like, on a good year, we are spending today probably $7,500 to do the roads that we have authority to do. If we were to do all of the roads, I can't remember what the math was. There's a lot, there's a lot of mileage for private yeah. roads in Brookfield. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. now you... But the good thing is that they're just plowed, they're not sanded. So the, so the question is, and again, I turn to the advisory committee because it's really a question of one side today we're spending about 7,500 bucks. I think the math that I did, if we were to do all kind of thing, it's, it, you're talking 20,000 bucks. It's not cheap. No. And I think that we need to realize as a town that we're either going to do it or we're not going to do it. And quite honestly, let the town so decide. I'd, I'd almost recommend a, a public hearing. Mm -hmm. Go. As opposed to sure. a, a tr conventional selectman's meeting. Yeah. I'm good. I'm gay. Yeah, I am. I discussed this with Cindy today because we had a meeting here. Sure. And Cindy said that, um, you know, her always whenever there's an ambulance call that goes out and it's down a private road, she said Herb is right there. And she said we, he plows we've, it. We've had he, that discussion for he years. He plows it, yep. he sands it. So he says they, they are able to get down in the emergency vehicles. And then she says he has even done it a lot of times for, you know, private homeowners. If the ambulance calls and says that the driveways are icy, he's right down there. She said sanding it. So she says there's no public safety so issues. So my recommendation would be to draft a new policy because I'm assuming you'd want to establish a new policy. Based on the feedback from the yeah. public So hearing. establish a new policy, let the board debate it. 
before we have a public hearing, get it to where we want it. Then yep. we'll have a public hearing to present it to the town, and then we'll enact a new policy if yep. the town. Because it's not fair to Cindy to feel, have to feel those calls or Herb to but put But it's up also with not fair to, to people that pay the same taxes. So. Understood. <laughs> Any other other? Uh, no I think you got. I think I've done. Yep. All right. I entertain a motion to adjourn. I'm going to make that motion. Yes, sir. Can I just have the board clarify the intent on the fire department vehicles? The, co the intent has not changed in two weeks is to return it. And that's unanimous with the board? I can't speak. Well, I don't think we ever got to no, a vote. We've never, no, we never got to a vote. Well, it wasn't a vote, but there was no issue with it. Yeah. Well, if we can, if there's no expense, then we can go at this thing again. Okay, fine. But we do need a vehicle. But we need to do it in the yeah. correct manner. Yeah. Well, which gets back to policy. Now, I, which now, is very clear. Ooh. It's very clear. I, so, uh, so, so a point of this yeah. letter in the correspondence, and I, and I saw in the emails, not the emails, in the Telegram, and I never read the comments on Telegram and Gazette, no. but, but someone called me up and was very, very upset about it. They were kind of nasty. Um, that's and that's why I don't read them. Yep. Um, the town truly believes that the fire chief had the ability to purchase a vehicle based on a town meeting. Um, I guess I should be speaking to the cameras, the people that might be out here for this. The town meeting sets money for the town to spend. The selectmen are delegated to allocate that money. That's correct. And it, it was not done the proper way. So, so and, and again, we can debate. What we have, or we have at least five documents that have different twists to a procedure. Pretty much uniform as far as the, the sign-off. I, I wouldn't de debate that. However, what, what's clear to me is that there needs to be a de delegation of authority that is very clear, that gets, if necessary, signed every year. I mean, I used to work in a, another environment where we were 24-7, 365, you had somebody in position who could make decisions then and there in the millions of dollars. And so, yeah, go ahead. We're, we're going way past the question. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, it, okay. It, it's been proven to me that the fire chief knew what the policy was. He chose not to implement that policy. Uh, I believe he was in the room when we enacted that policy back yeah. six years ago. I'm sure he was, because he and, attends every meeting. And anything over $10,000 has to be brought to the advisory committee and the selectmen for approval. So, and that was that was specifically because we set up the fleet stabilization yeah. account that was going to be seen by and overseen by the four selectmen. So the ten thousand dollar document is one of several, and I I saw that. I also saw the names at the bottom and their dated names, and where I was headed with it, Steve, is that a delegation of authority signed on yearly basis, whatever that is. So it is very clear that the person that's in that responsibility has a document that he signed or she signed that says, I agree. It, it's going to be proven, yeah. and when we do discuss it, it's going to be proven that, that Peter Martell knew that he had to approach the Board of Selectmen prior to purchasing okay. that vehicle. Because like I had even questioned, asked him and he wouldn't answer me when Karen was out. No, I think we were. I was, I was in practically every day checking on things. He saw me plenty of times. He could have approached me. He never once approached me about it, and I even asked him that, and he wouldn't answer the question. And I'm going to assume that you didn't find any notes that he brought it up at that mm -hmm. monthly meeting. No, I didn't write it down. I mean, just because I knew I knew the vehicle was going to be purchased at a point. Does that answer later. your question? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm just concerned that we're going to be spending upwards of five, probably ten thousand dollars, and we're going to end up with no vehicle. And we really need a command vehicle for this town. My. Uh, my statement to that is you should probably thank your, your chief for that. Well, the board has an opportunity to continue on and not. I'm not, I'm not in favor of purchasing a $34,000 vehicle for a part-time fire chief with an initial $10,000 for upgrades, period. Especially when I've seen an individual who is acting fire chief now using a forestry truck in the same capacity that you could use a $55,000 vehicle for. Dave? It's a different capacity, but... Dave? Yeah, does anybody know why that the old fire chief's cap failed the uh, uh, inspection? Steering. The what? Front end issues. Steering and, I believe, suspension. Okay. 
Any other discussion? I had even had a thought. I mean, if we get stuck with this vehicle, is there anything that the water department could use? Because I know you're talking about a new vehicle. That's, no. That's no. not. No, no, I mean, it's a thought if we get stuck with it. I'm biting my tongue. Any okay. other comments? No, we've no. debated it we've debated well it enough, enough tonight. Entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. So in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone.